This is my old racing helmet. Now it's Formula One spec, but unfortunately it's now out of date. So I'm gonna cut it in half because I want to put it inside a display case. But while I'm doing that, I thought it'd be a good idea to video everything and explain what's going on inside these helmets and how they work to protect the driver's heads. But before we head over to the workshop and cut this helmet open, I wanna just run through a few really interesting facts about these Formula One helmets. So the helmet itself is pretty simple. It's only comprised of a few parts. You've got the main shell here, which is made out of carbon fiber. Of course, at the front, you've got the visor here, which it shuts down and is sealed at the bottom, so it can't come open by itself. Um, you've also got these hands device pickups. Now the hands device is something that we wear over our shoulders. It's a piece of carbon that we wear over our shoulders and it has a short strap that comes around the back of your neck. Now the idea of it is, is when you have a head-on collision, your head obviously moves forward with all the massive g-force that's going on inside the car. Um, the hands device actually slows down and stops your head from going too far forwards so you don't damage your neck. So as I mentioned, this helmet is over 10 years old now and the modern Formula One helmets do have a few extra features. First of all, they have a strip that runs on top of the visor here. Now this was brought in after Felipe Massa's incident at the Hungaro ring a few years ago where he was hit on the head by a spring. The spring actually hit him just in this area of the helmet here and it managed to break the helmet and give him substantial head injuries. The newer helmets also have heated visors. Now in wet weather conditions, sometimes the rain can come through the vents and actually get wet within the helmet. So it's very easy for the visor to become steamed up. And obviously you don't want that when you're traveling around a racetrack at 190 miles an hour in the rain. So the modern helmets have thin wires that run through the visors and actually heat the visor up to reduce the steaming. It works just like a heated windscreen in a modern road car. And the final advancement with the visor is the fact that they actually automatically adjust to the outside sunlight conditions. So imagine you're coming through the tunnel at Monaco. All of a sudden the sunlight is reduced and it's pretty dark in the tunnel. The visor will allow you to see in those dark conditions. And then when you come out into the bright sunlight, the visor will automatically adjust to the sunlight itself. So of course, these Formula One helmets are safety tested with each iteration and homologation. One of the most impressive tests is that they fire a 225 gram projectile at the visor and the helmet itself. And the projectile is fired at 250 kilometers an hour, which is absolutely incredible. Now, at the point of the test isn't just to show that the helmet can take this kind of projectile being fired at it, but it's to show that it can absorb the impact so it reduces the strain on the driver's head. One of the most impressive safety tests that these helmets have to go through is that they are heated to 700 degrees Celsius for 45 seconds and the inside temperature, so basically the driver's head, can't get above 70 degrees Celsius. Now that's absolutely insane and just goes to show how good the insulation is inside these helmets. This is of course to protect the driver in the car in case of a fire and if the driver is trapped inside the cockpit. What I find incredible about these helmets is that they have to be strong, durable, heat resistant, and have all the safety features that a driver needs while maintaining super lightness. Now in Formula One, the drivers are pulling over 5G on the brakes and in the turns. And so every gram counts when it comes to designing these helmets. So let's open up this helmet, let's cut into it and find out how they package all of these things together within the Formula One helmet. Okay, so here we are magically at the workshop. I'm gonna cut the helmet in half. Um, because I'm going to put it in the display case, uh, in two display cases, one at home, one in the office, I'm going to cut the helmet directly down the middle. So I'm going to mark that up with some tape. But first, uh, I think I need to take these cheek pieces out so that it doesn't all tear while I'm actually cutting the helmet in half. So these are just the kind of foam inserts. Um, so yeah, just styrofoam, but I suppose a bit harder than normal styrofoam. So I raced with this helmet for probably eight or nine years. It's in a lot of action, protected me well. So it does feel a bit strange to be taking an angle grinder to it. Okay, so taped up down the middle. Let's get the angle grinder and see what's inside. I'm trying to find the clean one. 
So we're looking for something to put the helmet on to give it some stability. Oh, yeah. Try that. <laughs> so this is a this is a this is actually a, a, an upright from a. 97. 97 no. Benetton. No? no? Oh, hang on. It will have it written on it. It's good. It, 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 they looked at these in 97 at the like end that. of the season. They looked at doing them out of solid, so it's 97 or 98. End of 97 to try. Show it that way. Anyway, it's a good paperweight. <laughs> okay, perfect. Might be a little bit um, kind of over engineered for this job, but it's, uh, it's actually the perfect size for me to rest this on and have some stability when we're cutting it apart. So, so you can see I've cut halfway through at the moment. The helmet is starting to come apart. Just worked up to the top um, of the lid now. And we're gonna come back down. Not exactly sure how we're gonna go through the visor here. You know, they are super strong. And more than that, I think, I'm not sure if it will melt the, uh, the plastic here or whatever material this is, rather than just cut straight through it. So we'll have to see how we go when we do come to, to the visor then. There we have it, cut in half. Um, really interesting, the, uh, the polycarbonate uh, visor here is probably the most difficult to get through just because it has that um, absorption of the impact there. It's a bit softer than, than the carbon. Uh, but looking at it through here, you can see um, the shell, the outer shell here. Uh, then we've got a bit of foam just on the inside, some dense foam, and then we've got the kind of styrofoam here protect the head. Now, the interesting thing about the carbon that they use um, in the race helmets and the way that they layer up the carbon, there can be up to 17 layers of the carbon um, inside the helmet. And if you think about it, it needs to be strong from all kinds of directions because you're not sure if you're gonna hit your head on the side of the car or get hit on the head by a projectile coming at you. And so it's layered up in a way where the helmet is strong um, in all directions. If you compare that against something like a wing, which I have done here, uh, a front wing, this is off a late 90s Benetton F1 car. The way that this carbon will have been laid up, it will only really be strong um, in this direction because that's the way that the air is sucking down on the wing here. In, in the other directions it's not quite as strong. Of course it's still strong because it is a piece of carbon but it's made to be strong in this direction whereas the helmet is made to be strong in a multitude of directions. So what you can see here you've got you've got the carbon and then within there there's a number of layers of Kevlar as well. So the Kevlar which incidentally is what they use in bulletproof vests um, can absorb the impact and then spring back to its original shape, which is important in case you have multiple hits on the head. So basically there we've got the carbon and the Kevlar. Then we've got, let's take this inner shell out. Then you can see here, we've got the kind of dense foam on the inside. You can see also interestingly where the hands device post is inserted here and the chin strap here uh, where it's 
where it's bolted through. And then we've got the, the insert. Now we've got the foam here, which is obviously for, for the impact. So we've got all the safety labels here for the homologation. And then the last layer of foam, which is just for comfort really on, on the driver's head.